Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of learning resources and accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're doing installing and configuring LAMP. That's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. It's based on my book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available through Amazon and other online resellers. Software versions we're working with, CentOS version 6, um, Apache 2, MySQL 5.1, and PHP 5.5, or variations thereon. Um, the procedures I'm going to show you are basically the same for most recent versions of the software. You may have to make a few minor adjustments in some of the names and so on, but as long as you're running a fairly recent version and working with fairly recent versions of the software and any Red Hat based distro, uh, these procedures should work or uh, at least get you pointed in the right direction. What is LAMP? Well, it's four components, as we mentioned before. It's Linux, which provides the operating system, Apache, which is the HTTP server, MySQL, which is the database, and PHP, which provides the interaction between the web server and the database. Here's the diagram that we're going to be working with. Um, you'll need a server running CentOS, a workstation that allows you to connect to it, and it'll be necessary for you to be connected to the public internet as well, since we're going to be downloading software off the internet. Here are the steps that we're going to go through. First of all, we'll install Apache, which is the HTTPD server. Then we're going to install MySQL server. We'll secure the server. We're going to install PHP, and then we'll add additional modules. It's pretty straightforward. seems like there's a lot of steps uh, until you go through it a couple of times, and then you realize there's really not a lot to it. It's, it's uh, pretty easy. Here are the prerequisites. You'll need a computer running Linux. The one we're using is CentOS version 6.3. You can certainly try this with Ubuntu or Debian or Slackware, but the procedures that I'm going to show you involve tools such as the service commands and yum, uh, which are supported in Red Hat operating systems, Red Hat-based operating systems, and may or may not be available in other distros. You'll also need root access, an IP address on the server of 192.168.101.3. You can certainly change that to whatever you want, but the way I'm going to demo it, I'm going to use that address. And you need to have public internet access because we're going to be using YUM to install the software. And you'll need a management workstation with an IP address of 192.168.101.2. Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your server to possible attacks, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Just generally good advice, right? So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is install the HTTP server. That's the Apache server with the command yum minus y, which just confirms automatically. We don't have to do a separate confirmation that we want to do the installation. Uh, then install and HTTPD. And it'll whir for a moment. Search the repo for the uh, package, and then it will start the installation. So here you can see it's found the package, and it's saying, yes, this is the one that will be installed. Looking for any dependencies. In this case, there aren't any. Does the installation. Shows you with the hash marks the progress. And we're basically done, just waiting for confirmation. And there it is. We are done. Now let's configure the server to start automatically. So we're going to use the check config command to do that. chk config minus minus levels. And since this is a, a web, an internet-based server, we don't run a GUI on it. We only need to worry about starting it at level 3, run level 3. If you're not familiar with that, um, do a Google search on run levels and, and get familiar with it. But basically, that's where most servers live, is at run level 3. And we want to start the HTTPD server. We want it to turn on. So that takes care of that. Now let's start the server with the command service, HTTPD start. And it starts it, and we're rocking and rolling. Now, the next thing to do is to install MySQL and similar commands. So we'll do yum minus y install oops, MySQL. That's the client. And we'll also install the server. 
server really is the more important part here. So MySQL dash server. And it whirs for a moment. Same sort of thing that we saw above when we did the Apache installation. But there's a few more dependencies here. This is the nice thing about using yum instead of compiling from source. You don't have to worry about the dependencies because yum takes care of that for you. Now it's getting ready to actually do the installation. And as before, we'll see the hash marks indicating progress. It has a total of four packages to install. I kind of feel like I'm a sports play-by-play -play announcer as <laughs> we're going through this. There's the wind-up and the pitch. Almost done. That's the server, the biggest of the packages, thus taking the longest. Does the verification, and we're done. Now, we need to hurry up and secure that server before anything nasty could happen to it. So we're going to run a script called my SQL underscore secure underscore installation. And really all this is doing is setting passwords and clearing out some stuff that we don't need. So you'll see as we go through it. First of all, it wants to know the root password. Well, we haven't configured one yet, so we'll just hit enter for none. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't start the server. And in fact, let's go ahead and break out of this. So I'll do a control C to break out of it. And let's go in and fix that. So same thing that we did with the Apache server. I'm just not paying close attention to my notes here and got carried away. So we'll do check config minus minus levels 3, same thing as before, mysqld on. And that will turn on the database server automatically whenever we boot our Linux server. And let's uh, go ahead and get it started up now with the command service, mysql, oops, my SQL D start. And it whirs in the background for a moment and thinking about it for a moment. Now we can run the script to secure the installation. And since I already executed the command before and there's a lot of typing and you see how my typing is going today, I'm just going to use the up arrow to find that script again. There it is. And we'll hit enter. Now, hit enter say we don't have a root password configured we want to set the root password notice that the y is an uppercase y that means that's the default all we have to do is hit enter and it will default to the y so we'll put in our password and confirm it we want to remove the anonymous users don't need them um, it's really only for testing and, and potential security problems so we'll say yes to remove that we don't want root to be able to log in remotely for security reasons, so we'll just hit enter there. And we're going to remove the test database and access to it as well, so we'll say yes to that. And we're going to reload the privilege tables. All that means is that it now rereads the privilege tables so that it knows the new settings. And we'll hit enter, and it's done. So that takes care of some basic security for MySQL. Obviously, uh, there are more things that you can do to secure it, but that uh, gets us a, a good start. Now we're going to install PHP, and again, we'll use yum to do that. So yum minus y install PHP. And basically the same procedure that we saw before. You'll notice here that it's found some dependencies that it needs. So it's going to install those goes through the process. We have a total of three packages to install. There they go. They're downloaded. And now it's installing them. Getting ready to, I should say. You'll see the hash marks go across showing us the progress. There's package one. Almost done. It is done. Now we go to package two. Again, almost done. There we go. And finishing up with the actual PHP package. And there we go. We're done. Now we'll need to restart our HTTP server to enable PHP. So we'll do service, HTTPD, restart. Takes just a moment. Stopping it, shutting the server down, and then it'll bring it back up. And there we go. Now we can test to make sure that PHP is installed correctly and functioning properly. And this is pretty handy if you're not familiar with it. This is a PHP info page that we're going to create. And it's 
not hard to do. Um, first of all, we're going to create it in the document root of our HTTP server, which by default is in slash var slash www slash HTML. So we'll use VI, the VI text editor, my favorite word processor, just kidding. And we'll go to var slash www slash HTML. And we're going to create a file called info.php in that location opens up the VI text editor, and now we're going to put in some pretty simple code for uh, the PHP page. I have to do an I to put it into insert mode. And we'll do There we go, and that's all we have to do. We'll touch escape, then colon WQ for write quit, which is uh, shut it down and save it. And now, let's see what happens when we try to go to our PHP info page. I'll bring up a browser. Okay, I'm using Internet Explorer, but you could use any browser that you want on this. And we're going to go to the server uh, IP address, which is 192.168.101. Oops, 101.3. And we're going to put in info.php. And it should come up right away, but it's not. And the reason is because we've still got a firewall enabled. And you're going to run into this, especially if you go with the default installation of CentOS version 6. So let's go fix that. We're back in our command prompt, and let's use the command system-config-firewall. You could go in and modify IP tables manually, but that's a pain in the neck, and there's lots of opportunities to fat finger typing, and it's just easy to do it this way. So this opens up our firewall configuration dialog. It's got some kind of weird stuff here because I'm going through SSH, but uh, what we want to do is tab over to Customize, and we can't use our mouse here because this is all text-based, so we'll tab over and then hit the Enter key, for Customize, and now we're in the Trusted Services dialog. We're going to use the arrow key to go down to... secure www or https if you want to that's not really required here but if, you know if you're going to run a web server you probably want to have that available anyway so we'll go ahead and make that open that's port 443 and we'll go down to www port 80 now we're going to use the tab key to go over to close and again tab over to ok and confirm say yes where's for a moment and now we're back. Now just for grins, let's take a look at uh, what we've done with the IP tables. So we'll do the command IP tables minus minus list and you can just see right there where right in toward the bottom of the screen you can see where we've opened up connections uh, for uh, not only SSH, that's there by default, but also for HTTP and HTTPS. Now let's go back and try our browser again. We'll click on the refresh button. And there it is. So that's what happens when you bring up the PHP info page. Um, and it just gives you information about the version of PHP. And if you scroll down, in fact, let's do that. Let's scroll down and you can see the different modules that are installed. Lots of different things that are there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over it. You can do that on your own. But, but it's a pretty handy way to confirm that you've got PHP installed correctly and uh, doing what you expect it to do. Now, you may think, well, gosh, we're done because we've got Linux installed, we've got Apache installed, we've got MySQL and PHP, but no, because most of your uh, content management systems like Joomla or Drupal or WordPress are going to want some other modules installed, and so uh, we'll go ahead and put those in right now as well. Let's switch back to our command prompt. and. I've got a blog post that details what these things do, so I'll let you read that on your own. It's at uh, blog.soundtraining.net. Um, but let's just go ahead and install the, the, the modules that you're most likely going to need. So first of all, we'll do yum minus y install php-mysql. Let me just make a comment. Of all of the modules that I'm about to show you, this is the one that you absolutely have to have. Otherwise, you're not going to have any interaction between PHP and uh, the, the database. So you got to have that one. The others, you're probably going to want. Um, 
Here is PHP minus GD. That helps with some graphics. PHP minus MB string. That's helpful with uh, multi-byte character sets. You're using some foreign languages. Also uh, with PHP my admin. Uh, PHP minus ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. PHP minus pair. PHP minus XML. Oops. And finally, PHP minus XML RPC. Go ahead and run it. This is going to take a moment, so I'm going to, instead of making you watch the whole thing, I'm going to do an edit here and come back when it's done. So now we're done, and if you want to run a database-driven website, you've got the tools to do it with Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Now there's one more thing that you'll probably want to do, and that's to install PHP MyAdmin. I'm not going to show you that in this video because we've gone on long enough, but uh, I do have another video that shows you how to install PHP MyAdmin, as well as a blog post at blog.soundtraining.net. If you'd like more information, you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. As I mentioned, I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. You can like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And if you'd like more videos, we've got a ton of them. We're adding more, typically about one a week, sometimes more, occasionally less, at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And the companion book is available at our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.